and understand more what their position is. Dr. Kojo Asante is Director of Research and uh, Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. Doc, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Uh, good evening, Sandra. Good evening to your listeners. I recall that this matter, you raised it in the past few months or so. Uh, your calls were not heeded. What new approach are you adopting this time? Are you essentially trying to remind the president and for that matter, the appointees that they ought not to be there or you are, you are providing some more information for why they should not be there? Yeah, thank you very much. So maybe let me be a little contest to our meeting today. So uh, this was a meeting of the, the CSO platform on elections um, with, you know, uh, CDD, IDEC, and uh, Kodeo, you know, collaborating with the larger civil society body to deliberate on some of the observations we have made on elections this year and looking ahead at 2024, what kinds of insights and lessons that we can learn and how we can try to sort of uh, create a much more enabling environment for a peaceful, credible, and transparent election. So uh, there were a number of issues that we addressed. And of course, this was the, one of the issues that came up in March of, of this year. And uh, we did hold a press conference then uh, to ask the appointees uh, basically to to resign because the precedent that it was setting was going to create a real problem for the Electoral Commission and then also create a problem for the perceptions of the Electoral Commission, uh, which can undermine the credibility of the election. So um, we thought that we have to repeat that call because uh, so far um, nothing has happened. Um, the NDC also did petition the, the, the Council of State and in August the Council of State basically said that you know, this matter was beyond them because it had already been you know, completed by the president. So, But for us, this is a, a very difficult matter if we don't find a solution to it it is going to affect the perceptions of the electoral commission and you know that would not be good going into the election so we still have time to try to address it i think everybody there all the stakeholders including the parties admit and accept that this is a precedent that we should not encourage uh it's, it's in the past yes there's always been allegations here and there but when you begin to appoint people who are openly partisan, then you are opening up for a very difficult uh, uh, situation for a, a body that is supposed to be neutral and is supposed to regulate political parties. If we want to go the party way, then there are models like that where you can have cross-party representation on the electoral commission. But we have chosen an independent, uh, impartial, neutral electoral commission. So we have to work very hard to stick to that. It has served us well for 30 years, and we have to be very careful that we don't open the door and begin to undermine all that work we have done in the 30 years. Now, you are actually only then hoping that they step down. Are there no processes that can be triggered by people who feel they are not fit to be in that office. And why are these processes not being triggered? Because it appears you are appealing to their mm. conscience now, uh, but they can't be bothered. And uh, Boss Manasari answered today, and he says that those of you making the calls for the two persons to go uh, should be making that call to the right person. I think it's only fair that I just play uh, that voice. And if you, so mm. if you indulge me, let's sure. just hear what Boss Manasari said sure. in response to that issue. Somebody was asked whether the exercise has been very, very successful. The commission we are talking about. The CSOs calling on the EC, is this some appointment of commission members? Please, the, the electoral commission, those who are working as officers, they, they were appointed by the commission under the leader. Commission members are not appointed by us. The chair didn't appoint them. So please, if you have any concern about the appointment, I think that where the people who appointed them will be the best person. But for we electoral committee, we, we are doing our work and far we don't think that anybody's presence has undermined the quality, the integrity, and the transparency of our processes. And we are working well 
and everything is going. So, uh, Doc, that's uh, Bosman Asari. Mm. He's with the EC. He says that these persons you have difficulties with have not undermined their work in any way or affected their transparency in any way, and that your lamentations send them to the right quarters. They are fine. Two, I think two issues. So first of all, I think I, we, we should really be very careful not to be to trivialize this matter. You know, when people make the case that, oh, commissioners don't count, you know, uh, ballot papers, uh, therefore they don't influence elections in any way, and therefore we, where is the problem? I can tell you I've been in many elections across Africa, and one of your biggest problems is the trust of the EC. And those the, the trust uh, uh, issues have very little to do with what actually happens uh, on the day of election. It is what people see and believe. And that's why they say that, you know, uh, uh, you have to always be in a position where uh, it, it, it's seen, you know, that you are, you are neutral. If you take somebody who is actively a, a political activist, and you go and put them in the electoral commission, the person might do his job very well. But in the minds of the citizens who have to legitimize the process, they would always see you as a partisan. And that is something that has to be uh, addressed because it's not enough that the, the people there feel that they are going to do an independent job. No, it has to be seen to be done. You know, that independence has to be seen to be done. And it starts from, you know, whether or not they are uh, a part of a political party or they are not part of a political party. And this is also, we are talking about a, a, a state body whose main purpose is to regulate political competition. So at many, many levels, that apparent uh, bias is not good. It's not even good for Mr. Dr. Bosman and the rest because if that person, uh, there's a feeling that that person is partisan, it then taints the whole electoral commission. So I understand where he's saying, yes, we are not, we are not asking the, the chairperson of the EC and Dr. Bosman and Mr. Tete to take any action regarding the two commissioners that have been appointed that we have raised issues with. We are appealing to those individuals themselves. And we have laid uh, the arguments very clearly that this is a precedent that is worrying, and it's a precedent that if we don't find a way to cure it, it opens the door for even more damage. And I don't think we want that. So um, I really think that we should take it seriously. I, at least at the room that I was today, everybody takes it very seriously. Um, we don't want to wait and say, you know, I told you so. I think we have a lot of time to try to address it. If we want an independent electoral commission, then we have to make sure that we do create that independent electoral commission. Otherwise, it would undermine our electoral democracy, and which is one of the things that have been going for Ghana for the last 30 years. If we destroy that, trust me, we, our democracy is very, very vulnerable. So um, I take his point, but I think that we shouldn't trivialize or you know, belittle uh, this particular issue. I mean, the other issues to worry about, but I think for me, going to the election in 2024, this matter has to be resolved somehow. And we want to still encourage that appeal process. I don't think we've gotten to the point of any litigation yet. I mean, it's something that Kodeo continues to examine if you know it, it comes to that. But I think stakeholders have to come to some consensus that this is not the path we want to go. We don't want tomorrow somebody to go and appoint a general secretary or a national organizer onto the electoral commission. Then what are we talking about? Now, the dilemma that you are faced with is similar to what the NDC is faced with when it comes to the central bank governor. They want the BOG boss out, but removing him is almost like uh, trying to swallow your Adam's apple. That's the difficulty you have now too, and don't you? Because you are hoping that these two persons would resign voluntarily. But you do know that resigning voluntarily is not something that we see a lot of the times in these parts of our world. If persuasion fails, which has failed so far, what options can you deploy? Well, I mean, Sander, uh, first of all, this is not 
uh, I mean, I'm I'm one person, and uh, I know you're using it, uh, you know, as a reference. But I'm I'm one person. Kodeo and all of those who are, uh, you know, addressing this this point, we are part of a society. We are part of a system um, that we are all trying to create a, a Ghana a democratic system that you know is is, is stable. Uh, that is without conflict, that is prosperous. So we don't see this as, you know, just our bedding. Um, we think the, 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 the engagement, and that's why we have this engagement, is that we, people, we have to come to some common ground about what is it that we desire and how do we ensure that we can all secure the, the, the thing that we desire. Because it's not, I mean, it's not my, just my preference or anything like that. If the Electoral Commission is not able to deliver its mandate because of perceptions of bias and trust and so on, we are all at risk. So it is a, it's a situation that we prefer that we all come to that, you know, to that conclusion and find the right solution. We will do, you know, we'll do our best. But yes, if we are best bill, we all fail. I, I don't, you know, in these kinds of conversations, uh, I think it is for all of us uh, to benefit, uh, even for the political parties. I don't think that they want this kind of situation because then they will damage the, the, the democracy project that they have benefited the most in the Fourth Republic. So we will continue to make the appeal, we'll continue to engage. We are starting this conversation because we feel there's time and hope that we can come to that common ground, realize the pathways that we are taking, and decide that you know we go a way that is more secure, is more stable, given the experiences that we have had across the continent. Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, we'll keep watching this space and see what happens. Thank you for speaking to our doc. You're welcome, Santa. That's Dr. Kojo Pumpunia Santi. He is with the CDD. He's Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement. These are